Hi Girl Scouts, I hope you're doing really well and getting excited for another fantastic week of learning. As we get ready to start another week and our week this week, we actually get to meet on Thursday. I thought I would put up our video um, to go with our, our book, I should say, that we read last last time we met for Girl Scouts that kind of kicked off our, our Girl Scout season this year. And we were talking all about the women's suffrage movement and the women getting a right to vote. And so the book I was I read to the to the girls last time we met was called The Voice That Won the Vote. And it's a story about a woman from Tennessee that that encouraged a certain someone to vote the right way. And while there were so many women that were fighting for their right to vote, this woman had a very important part in getting that law changed. A vote is a voice. This is what I believe in. This is what I stand for. This is what matters to me. This is who I am. This is who I choose to lead. My town, my state, my country. In 1920, women were still denied that voice. For nearly 75 years, they had organized meetings, marched in parades, carried signs, and made speeches demanding their right to vote. Say yes to suffrage, they shouted. There were yellow roses. Yellow means yes, but they were silenced. Other voices drowned them out. Troublemakers, uncivilized. Female voters will surely cause chaos. Women with a voice in politics? Nonsense. The only vote a woman needs is the vote to choose her husband. But nestled in a valley on a farm in East Tennessee, one woman was determined to have a voice and a vote. Feb Byrne was known around town as smart and strong-willed. At a time when most women didn't go to college, Feb did. She graduated and became a teacher. She read newspapers, magazines, and books. She loved to learn. Feb Byrne was especially fascinated by laws and the people who made them. Every year on election day, the men who worked on her farm would head to town hall to cast their votes. And every year, Feb Byrne would watch them go. She was sick and tired of staying home, shut out of the process. So one day, she sat on her front porch with some paper, a pen, and a plan. Dear son, she began. A few days later, a letter arrived on the desk of the youngest lawmaker in Tennessee. His name was Harry Byrne. And on that hot August day, he watched the state capitol fill up with reporters, photographers, and people from all over the country who had come to witness history. America was on the verge of change. 35 states wanted women to vote, but the country needed 36 to make it law. It all came down to Tennessee, the last state left to vote. If lawmakers in Tennessee said yes, women across the nation would finally be allowed to cast their ballots. If Tennessee lawmakers said no, well, things would stay exactly the same. It was a tie. They would have to vote again. Harry Byrne was ready to stand firm for what he believed in. He had voted against women's suffrage in the first round. He knew that most of the people who had elected him hated the idea of women voting. Many of those people were in the audience. They knew they could count on Harry Byrne. After all, the proof was right there on his jacket, a red rose, the symbol of keeping women in the home and out of the voting booth. The state capitol was filled with more red roses than yellow that day, and everyone knew what that meant. Someone would break a tie with a no. It was time for a vote again. Someone did indeed break the tie. Harry Byrne. Yes, he said. What? The officials in charge asked the young lawmaker to repeat himself. Obviously, he'd made a mistake. Clearly, he'd gotten confused. But there was no mistake. He was not confused. Harry Byrne wanted women to vote. No one could believe it. Many of the women who had organized meetings, marched in parades, carried signs, and made speeches were in the audience wearing their yellow roses. They gasped and cried and hugged each other. 
but why did Harry Byrne change his vote? I know that a mother's advice is always safest for a boy to follow, he explained. And then, from his jacket pocket behind that red rose, Harry Byrne pulled out a note from his mother, the one Feb Byrne had written on her front porch. Hooray and vote for suffrage and don't keep them in doubt. Don't forget to be a good boy with lots of love, Mama. The people who had elected Harry Byrne were shocked and furious. A grown man listening to his mother? We'll show him, they thought. We will not vote for Harry Byrne in the next election. Byrne ruin in politics, declared the headlines. Harry Byrne understood. He knew that by giving women the right to vote, he was giving up his seat in the Tennessee House of Representatives. The people in his district just weren't ready for a leader who wanted women to vote. He told newspaper reporters, I'm happy simply because I followed my conscience. It kept telling me that women are people and voting, he knew, should be the right of all people. He thought again of his mother. So I made the choice, he said, explaining that standing up for what I, he believed in was more important than winning the next election. It took courage and courage has a way of making things right. Election day came. When the campaigns were over and the votes were recounted, the news that representat representative was announced. Harry Byrne. He kept his seat in the Tennessee legislator, kept standing up for equal rights, and no one was prouder than the woman who, without speaking a word, gave all women a voice. And there's that Feb Byrne. In the back of this book, if you want to borrow it from me, I'll keep it in my classroom. You can see a bit of a, a timeline starting with 1848 when women started trying to get this right to vote. And Susan B. Anthony, who's actually on a coin, um, is a, was a big part of that. She was actually arrested in New York when she was trying to vote. So you can see this timeline and how, this, how women work together to get that done. And Feb Byrne was just one of those pieces in the puzzle that made it happen. So, Girl Scouts, this week we'll be diving into democracy and thinking about um, how we vote and why we vote and what our job is as Americans. And this, as girls, as women, as ladies, this is a great starting off point for us to be thinking about because it's important for us to remember that we didn't always have this right. So it's so important for us to do it um, the best that we can now because we do have that right. Remember, in order to earn the patch for the bicentennial of being, have women being able to vote, you need to ask your family some questions about voting and then you're picking something that's very important to you and you're doing a little presentation for me. I'll include those in an email that I send to your parents today or your family members today. And I'll include this little link to this video so you can watch it. Um, but remember, and you can just drop it off on my teacher table anytime you want. Talk to you soon. Can't wait to see you.